Welcome back to another chapter of our LEGO journey. This week I made a huge mistake and that was giving you the opportunity and ability to determine the direction of our week in LEGO, which I promptly withdrew after I did it because it was going to be a disaster for me financially. Nonetheless, I did end up building a big set from the backlog that I hope you enjoy. We also did a little LEGO cleaning down here that you can't quite tell as much anymore because Clark and I are on to a new project or I guess an ongoing one that's, that's rather large. And not only that, but I also sold some things out of the backlog by putting them on eBay and I take you through that process and a whole lot more. So I invite you to join me on this episode of our Lego journey and you get to see all of these incredible things that uh, I just kind of uh, hyped up for you. So enjoy and I'll be back at the end to uh, see you out. This episode starts off with some terrible <laughs> news. My son is now a Roblox detector. I don't know I how I'm gonna live through this. Meanwhile, all these amazing Lego sets are just sitting here waiting to be built. What? I can't play some Roblox. Yeah, you can play. I'm just messing with you, buddy. Speaking of sets waiting to be built, I thought we'd start this episode off venturing into the very dangerous place, the storage room of doom. I actually got a request to show the backlog, which is appropriate for today because we are out of ongoing Lego sets. And I asked you guys, which set should I build? I just picked four at random. I'm actually going to turn my light on here so you can get an idea of the scale and scope of the backlog as it stands right now. It's pretty much everything on this shelf right here from uh, all the biggest sets to some of the smallest sets and then back to big sets again. I guess most of them are pretty big other than these. If you want to pause it, you can see what sets we have. But when I picked four today, because that's all YouTube would allow me to pick for a poll so I could do votes, I just picked four at random, some that I was really interested in building, including one that apparently you guys really want to see because it got 51% of the votes, more than the other three sets combined, and that was the Parisian restaurant. I came back here and I was like, okay, let's do this. And I was like, wait a minute. This set is a little bit older. It's retired, obviously still sealed. So I looked the value of it up. And right now this set sells for about $400 on eBay. And I was like, dude, I should definitely not open this up. Like, I don't buy these sets to invest, but after a certain point in time, they become investments, if that makes sense. In fact, someone even commented, they're like, if the Parisian restaurant's still sealed, don't open it. So, unfortunate to all of the people that voted for this, which I think there was almost 600 votes when I, I just checked it. It was just posted this morning. 600 votes. Over half of the people wanted to see that. But I'm gonna throw a curveball at you and I'm actually gonna pick the set that I was really hoping that you would pick and maybe you don't necessarily wanna see, but I really would like to see it. And that is the Lego Ideas typewriter. I feel kind of terrible picking one that you guys don't necessarily wanna see, but I, I should have probably did a little research before I came back here. And I'm like, oh, typewriter, Parisian restaurant, Black Panther bus, the set that Lego honestly can't even give away, but I think it looks cool. That's gonna be a great display piece. And that was like, I was kind of hoping you'd pick that one too, but I think that might've been the least popular pick. And then the other one that I, I kind of picked at random was the City of Lanterns. I figured that since I, just finished a Ninjago style set. Why not start up another one after working on that for three years? But I think ultimately, like, I just, this set's just calling to me right now. And maybe that's the best reason to pick a set. In fact, I think the letter right there says, it says, Greg, build this right now. And that's what I'm going to do. That being said, I will continue doing polls when the time comes to start new sets. And I'll make sure I do some research ahead of time, picking ones that maybe aren't worth more to other people than they are to me. This set though, still on the shelves as far as I know, and I think it'll make a nice build for this week. I know if you're a kid, this may not be like the set that's like the coolest or whatever, but dang, it's it's just awesome looking. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've worked so hard trying to sell people on a Lego set that I'm about to build. I suppose it's probably the guilt that I have for not choosing the one that you actually want to see. I'm like, look how good this is. Come on, you see it, right? Just let me have my fun, guys, okay? Let me build the set that I want. Anyways, let's uh, open this up and probably make a huge brick tech video out of this because there are, yep, there we go. Two bags, two full bags fell to the floor. There are a total of 2,079 pieces in this set. Lots of sand green in here if you're trying to add that to your collection. But the bag situation is crazy. Almost dropping another one. Uh, let's give you a close up. I'll show you what's coming out of here. Clark, there are sand green rods in here, buddy. I didn't even know that was a thing, but here is the pile. Look and be amazed. Lots and lots to build. This should keep me busy throughout the week. 
assuming that I can get this done in one week. We'll have to, to stay tuned to find out on that. Our booklet inside of a cardboard sleeve, which I love to see. No more folded manuals for us and no more complaining from us. Just make ourselves at home right here. I think I'll be building this down at Bartech this entire time. So then I can listen to podcasts, watch movies. It's great lighting. It's just the perfect place to build your Lego. There, I'm selling you on that now. What else am I gonna sell you on by the time this video ends? Have you guys tried Squarespace? Or better yet, how about Raid Shadow Legends? It's the new game that just came out and it's amazing. Sucks. Oh, does it suck? I, I see it advertised everywhere, but here's our sticker sheet. We have two stickers. Wow, would you look at that? The letters that you can pull out of here, it's actual paper. That is crazy. Okay, so that's our paper and then here is the manual. Look how beautiful that is. These Lego idea sets just know what they're doing. Oh my goodness for myself. These instruction manuals are actually why I love Lego ideas. You can see here that says, meet the man behind the keys. So this is Steve Guinness, the designer of the original Lego typewriter that inspired this set. And you can actually see what I'm assuming to be one of his early prototypes here. And I just think that's so darn cool. But after that, we kind of get some more imagery here. There is a, a typewriter you can't even tell is Lego probably, but there is the manual and all the bags we're gonna get into. A total of 11 bags it looks like. And uh, wow, the first four bags are just building the keys. That's the part that I'm most excited about though, to be honest, like I just wanna see how this all works and how it functions. Ooh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, woo, we're gonna be getting into some Technic here, boys. This is gonna be cool. I just actually finished my Technic build. So yeah, I'm kind of fiending for it. I feel like this is gonna be, this is gonna be good stuff. I might need another bar tech here to be able to find the space to work on all this. I'm just gonna take all the high number bags and we're gonna put them back inside the box here. Cause it might be a little bit till I get to those, but there's bag one, there's bag one, and oh, there's all the keys. This is gonna be really cool. But I'll bring you through the whole process with me, of course. That's the way I love to do Lego. I don't do reviews. I I do experiences or something along those lines. We'll see. I'm gonna get into bag one here and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like once I, I have this all constructed and uh, nine of those things built with my fingers bleeding. We finally recovered Clark Man from the world of Roblox, much to everyone's delight. And he has a, looks to be a mock to share. A little robot guy, we'll set him down. Then, yeah, we'll try to get him in focus here, maybe. He has saws, <laughs> he has saws on his hands. His head's like a little brick built head. He has like a main like torso piece right there. It's like basically like his whole reason like he's a robot guy. He has a booster so he can go flying. How is he at typing? Is he is he any good at that? How many words per minute? Twenty nine million. Oh, that's pretty good. I am chainsaw man. Oh, I think you, that might be a copyright strike there. <laughs> I've returned to my Lego factory where I'm building the same thing many many times over. Clark and I are learning the secrets of Power World, the game we started playing last week. We got a little obsessed with. We're getting good ideas here. This guy is way ahead of us in the game, though, dude. He's like. He's got guns and all kinds of conveyor belts and things happening. I feel like a noob. I just wrapped on bag one and I have to warn you, if you don't like repetition, this may not be the set for you because I had to build nine of these, nine of these, nine of these. And then I had the luxury of building a few of these that were, I guess those two are the same. So yeah, that's where we're at after bag one. I'm still itching to build though. So we're gonna go into bag two and uh, we'll see how this one goes. I finally get to use those those Technic rods that are sand green. It's the worm. <coughs> Done. It's a worm. <laughs> it's just a wheelie. He doesn't move, he doesn't slink, he doesn't do anything that a worm does. He's just a Technic rod. Yep. It's the best. It, it's the, it's a crater set. One piece. You say one piece? <laughs> oh, I love crater one piece sets. It's just the worm. Never had these before though, in that color at all. But there's a in fact, I never had one that's this long either. That's pretty cool. How will the rest of this bag be? This is everything from bag two, which doesn't look too, too crazy. Got a little sand green start in there too, which is lovely. I just finished bag two and all I can say is that was a wild build. All of those Technic pieces that I built in the first bag, they all got stacked up on here, layer by layer, sort of building a skyscraper here until it turned into this. And it's just, 
craziness. I was so nervous the whole time I was building this because I'll, I'll show you a little sample here. Like every time you get to a new layer, you got to put one of those on and then there's like three different pieces. And then this layer, you put one of those on and then there's one of those. And then it's just kind of like replicating that over and over again. And again, if this is a set that if you don't like repetition so far, probably not the best set for you, but I've been enjoying it. This is challenging my brain and I just thought that was really cool the way that that all came together and I'm just like super proud of it now. I do have to show you bag three though. Speaking repetition, you like putting keys on things because that's what we're doing in bag three. It is all the keys that go on to all of the uh, those. So I guess this is gonna be sitting like, like this, I guess. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's how it works. So all the keys are gonna go on top of that for bag three and We'll actually have like a functioning keyboard here essentially finished up with bag four. I think I'm gonna do bag three and four here because that's like, from what I recall, that kind of completes like the first uh, leg of this, if you will. Yeah, I feel like that's a great point to get to today. So I'm gonna crank those out and then I'll show you what that looks like. Spoiler alert, that's what it'll be, but I'll have it here in front of me. I've warped ahead and I just finished bag four. There was a cost though, Clark man went upstairs and promptly fell asleep on the couch, apparently taking a self-prescribed nap. But I do want to show this off to you because it turned out really nice. You can see it really coming together now from where I was in bag two, where it was just like a tower of this to now being an actual keyboard. I guess it's a keyboard on a typewriter, right? The keys don't work yet. I'm thinking that they do in the future. Like I think there's gonna be that satisfying click, but we have to build more to make that happen. As you can see, like you almost need something to weigh it down and then you click it down, I think. So I'm hoping that comes in a future bag because right now things are not, uh, <laughs> things aren't going so well. It was neat putting those all together. Bag three was a breeze, just putting those all on. As long as you know where keys are on a keyboard, you can kind of do it even faster, but that's what that looks like. I'll show you kind of all the angles and stuff. And again, you can see it coming together. Four bags. That's a nice little accomplishment. Bag five looks like we're building on to the back or at least starting that. And then one day, eventually, it'll look like that. And I'm very excited about that. But that's going to be for our next day in Lego as a part of this chapter. I'm trying to break this up a little bit. I don't want to get too burnt out. Plus, I'd like to get some other things done. Like maybe uh, cleaning up would be a good thing. So on that, hope you enjoyed this little segment. And I'll be back with you uh, one second for you in your time where we continue on with our Lego journey. I did not plan this, but apparently I'm wearing a sand green shirt, just like the set that I'm working on. But more important than that, I got to show this off because it's an accomplishment, at least for me. I've got a nice clean workspace here. Spent some time cleaning up all the stuff that was sitting around. It's amazing how it kind of gets ahead of you or you get behind it, whatever the phrase is, but I got everything put away, looking good. That space is all cleared off over here. Nothing at all other than the task at hand, which is doing a little more work here on the typewriter. I finished bag four yesterday and now we are gonna make more progress on that lovely set, getting into bag five. It looks like we're gonna be working on sort of like the back of it now. Unfortunately, we gotta go digging again because I put all of the bags back in. I guess I'll just, since I have some space now, I will get like five and six out. Maybe even seven, if I'm feeling frisky, there's seven, at least one of the bags. According to the manual here, we have to get to bag eight to complete the next leg of this set. And that is all of this that you see here. So I don't think we're gonna quite get that far today, but it gives us something to aspire to. Let's tackle this one bag at a time, jump, well, two bags at a time, jump it into bag five and we'll start this process and I'll show you what it looks like when I have that part done. I just completed bag five and I wanted to show this to you because it's the moment I've been waiting for where these keys start to feel like actual typewriter keys. If I hit this down, you can see how that pops up. Now there's nothing behind it or anything else built so far that really delivers it back to where it should be, but you can see how these keys are starting to have a little resistance, I guess. And that's what that thing's doing. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here that's way beyond my level of comprehension of Lego. Like if you told me to build a typewriter, it would certainly not be this, it'd be terrible, but you can see it's starting to come together and that's why I wanted to do a little clip here to show you just how this is working because as I continue to build, as I go into bag six, some of that might start getting hidden. So it's nice to have like these little, these little checkpoints where you can take a moment to appreciate what these Lego designers and I guess fan designers are really capable of. This is gonna be painful for me to share because it's so embarrassing. I just made one of the biggest new moves in Lego. You see bag six here that I opened up and have all coordinated here? 
It's, it's bag nine. I went to do this step and I'm like, why don't I have these pieces? I opened bag nine and a bag six. So they're actually mixed together here. And then I went in and I got what I thought was bag nine. That's actually bag six. I'll bag this over here and then I'll pull pieces from here. And then the, the rest will just be left over for until I get through these. It just goes to show you, no matter how many years of your life you've been doing something, it's still pretty easy to mess up, which is what I did. So always check your bags, make sure, uh, make sure that's not a six. Look at the stuff there and uh, realize you screwed up before you screwed up. Today's adventure begins in the storage room of Doom where we find ourselves with a Lego set that sold on the Brickitech store on eBay. Got the Blaze Bridge going out today. I really need to get some stuff listed because the entire contents of the Brickitech store are literally in these drawers. But down here I think is where I've got all of my sets. There is the manual for that one and then these are all of the pieces. And I just gotta put that in a box and send it out to the post office. That's perfection. And we'll just put that on top. And the nice thing about these kind of things is that you don't really have to worry about damaging boxes or bending anything up. It's it's just pretty much perfect the way it is. I might throw some, some bubbles on the top of there though, just for funsies. In fact, I've got a whole thing of bubbles that just exist in there. That's my bubbles, this is my paper. I save all of it. Might have got a little too aggressive there, but that's that's pretty much it. If you're wondering how I bring myself to sell a Minecraft set, it's because this is a duplicate we got at a yard sale. I always say you can never have too many blaze bridges, but I think one's probably enough for us. It wasn't a huge victory, but after fees and everything, I made just under 15 bucks, which is not bad. That goes towards the Lego budget. Sale this morning and seeing how depleted the Brickitech store inventory is got me inspired to take a quick detour from the typewriter and come back here in the storage room and list some things to sell on eBay. Everything you see on these shelves here in the front, everything is for sale. When it goes for sale, kind of depends on what the values are. Some of these things are probably ready. Some of these things may need to marinate for a little bit, but as you can see here, it goes back a little ways. I've got some CMFs in there, I believe. We've got some Lego games, which are gonna be a little complicated to sell because I'm gonna have to make sure all the inventory is there. It's much easier when you have brand new sets that you can just listen. I'm just like, brand new and sealed box, and it can go out. Most of this stuff, or some of this stuff, I have duplicates of like that. I built one of these, but bought three because I thought it'd be a good investment. Again, another set that might need to marinate for a bit. There's some more stuff down there behind the Ferris wheel that's just randomly sitting here on the floor. I would love to display that, I just need a lot of space. Now, if you're wondering how I make the decision out of all these sets, which ones I should list, well, I just go into the eBay app just like that. And then at the top right, there's a little camera icon up there. And then it brings this up, which as you can see, is actually a camera. But instead of going into image, I go into barcode, which is an option at the bottom. And as you can see there, there's a rectangle that comes up, which is perfect if you wanna take a set and every set has a barcode on it. And then you just put that on there like that. It scans it like you're working at Target. And then it brings up all the listings that are active right now. But those aren't what you're concerned about. You wanna see what the sold listings are. So here, I'll flip this around, makes it easier for you to see. I click on filter, and then I go down here and click show more. And then I go down here and I click on sold items. This tells you what is sold recently and how much it's sold for. So this is going for $16 with free shipping, $13 with free shipping, $10 with $5 shipping. So basically like 15 bucks or so. And I would say for a set like this, it might be worth it for me to hold on to it for a bit longer because after eBay fees and shipping, I'm probably gonna end up making maybe, maybe like $8 off of this. Like, yeah, most of these are going for like 15 with free shipping or so. So I think I'll just get a hold on to this for a bit. This is a great set, by the way. It's just, we already have it. I don't know how we got a second one. It might have came in mail time, which is where some of this stuff came from. But it's just like, there's no point in us holding on to things that we've already built and owned. So this set, while it's super popular, it's also an inexpensive set. And for $8, I'll let it sit a while longer. I'm curious about this. I had a bunch of these. In fact, I think I might have already sold a few of these, but we'll do this as an example here so you can see what this is like. Mm, if I can find a spot, my uh, racing wheel is here. I haven't raced in Gran Turismo since I broke my foot. We scan that and there you go. $75 is what people have it listed for, but what is it selling for? That's the problem sometimes with like resellers. They go on and they're like, oh, this thing's selling for 200 bucks. It's like, well, no, that's just what somebody has it listed for. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's selling for. So as you can see, that sold for $40 with free shipping, 65, 38, 
55. I think this might be worth listing. I'll put it pretty fair on here. Maybe right around 50 with the shipping calculated. But you can see these were all sold just within the last few days. So this will be a quick selling item if I list it properly and put the right price on it. So I can get rid of this. And, you know, this could be one of those things that maybe if you're watching this video 10 years from now, you're like, Greg, that thing's selling for $200. Well, I converted it from something that was sitting on a shelf years ago into something that I could actually want or use. And that's the whole purpose of, of why I'm doing this. So not only that, but I don't think anyone can argue with the fact that it's nice to be able to finance your current Lego purchases with inflated prices on ones that you got for free from Lego for spending a lot of money buying stuff while it's still sitting over here. I'm in a bad spot, guys. Real bad spot. We got to get some stuff out of here. So I'm going to pick a bunch of stuff and I'll, I'll show you here what, what I'll... Okay, that one's going to be a little bit cheaper. We got damage now. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, coming soon. Okay. I just, this helped me realize that there's something else that we might need to share this week too. I just pulled some of the smaller stuff off, tried to get something to reflect a lot of the themes that I have. So we've got Dimensions, we've got some Lego Disney, we've got Star Wars, we've got Jurassic World, we've got Lego City, we got something for the Ninjago detectors. We've got the Harry Potter, of course, and then another Marvel detector set. Got some of these sets from the past that I, I really don't have anything that I'm gonna do with these. So even though they're a few years old, we'll, we'll list them. That one I have two of. And then this camera, I have duplicates of that. And I might actually use this to finance the Polaroid camera that just came out. Cause that's like my favorite set of the year. So this will get me like almost, maybe like a third of the way there. And then I've got multiples of these too. So right now I'm just kind of clearing out some of the some of the dupes and some of the things that I just I just can't see myself ever building. A part of me looks at these sets sitting here on my table and thinks, well, Greg, you should just leave these in the storage room of Doom. Let them sit for another decade, and they're going to be worth so much more money than what you're getting out of them right now. But then I also think, I'm not really in the business of sitting on Lego sets forever. In fact, like just having these is causing me anxiety, all that stuff that's in the storage room. And my goal is to get through everything. And I'd much rather, as I mentioned earlier, just convert any money that I can get out of this into something that I can actively use now, enjoy with Clark Man, make a video on, of course, and then ideally put on display in the Brickitech studio. That's kind of the direction that I feel myself going. And these will make somebody else happy out there instead of just sitting there collecting dust, riding away in my storage room. Maybe there's somebody out there that didn't get a chance to get this that could actually use it and want it. And then I can convert it to something else that I can use and want. And I just feel like that's a win for everybody. And it's so much better to, to do that and to sell this at a fair price to somebody that wants it than just to be a hoarder that's waiting for the prospect of a future return, at least in my opinion. That being said, if you are a Lego investor and your sole purpose is buying sets to do exactly that. No shade thrown at you. Do your thing, man. I'm more of a, I'm a guy that wants to enjoy the Lego system as it is, not necessarily uh, investing in it. Figure while we're doing this, I'll take you through the process. So we'll stick with the Harry Potter one that I showed you earlier, the Book of Monsters. Took some pictures of it, showing all the sides and then that the, the corners are still sealed, of course. And then what they want from you is to know what the condition is. So in this case, condition's new. It's very easy when things are new. And then you can just go back. That's the item specifics. Down here, you you can write a description. And again, mine is just brand new and sealed box. So that's pretty simple. You don't need to write really anything more than that for a set. I could probably write that I plan to package this with, with great care, but that's just, I think that goes without saying. Pricing wise, I'm going to do a buy it now. And then it says the median sold price was $48.92. I'm gonna do $49.99. I just like those kind of numbers. I feel like that's what people are used to in the world of shopping. So we'll go that. And then for the shipping, I'm actually weigh these out. What I do is I just find a, a generally sized box that I'll use for all these sets. And I threw a whole bunch of bubble wrap and um, packing bubbles in there just to get an idea of what the weight's gonna be if I were to package these really nicely. I'd rather be a little over than a little under. So that's saying one point three, two ounces. And then they're kind of giving me like an estimate where I guess when these have sold before, it's been like one pound, 14 ounces. So I'm just going to do like one pound, four ounces. And that should be more than enough. Cause as you can see, I have this filled pretty well. So if I were to package this really nicely, that's how it would go. Now this box is a little smaller than what this is. So I'll have a, a bigger size box, 
but things will probably work out in the end. I haven't really had any problems. You just don't want to underestimate the shipping because it's more expensive than what you think in most cases. I don't do sh free shipping because sometimes, like if I were to put free shipping on this and say I accounted for $10, it might actually cost me $15 if the person lives in California or something like that. So I like to have the actual shipping costs reflected on there and uh, accounted for. Now, my price might be a little high, and I'll find that if this doesn't sell in a few days, maybe I'll, I'll back it off by a little bit if it's not being competitive. But I feel like that's a good good spot to start. So we will do that, and I will just click list my item. It's thinking about it, pondering, and now my listing's live. So my first item's done. And now I'm just gonna do that a bunch of times over and over again with all these things, and they'll all be listed. And just like that, got all my sets listed. Roxy Bear, very impressed with my listing abilities, as are a few people already. I've got views and watchers. Well, a couple of views on a few things, but uh, I got everything listed that was on my list. And I'll do a post on Brickitech to see if anybody's interested in anything I've got here. It actually looks kind of awesome all stacked up there like that. I think I'm gonna do a little segment like this each week just to hold myself accountable to keep listing stuff and then I'll document it as it sells too. It'll be kind of a fun thing to do together and you can see how things come and how things go in the Brickitech studio. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Now let's throw it back into the storage room of doom. That didn't work. No way all this is gonna fit in my eBay drawer so this is now officially my stuff for sale shelf and we'll just keep working our way down and hopefully get everything listed in, uh, in a while. Few weeks, few months, few years. The way I see it, progress is progress, and that's exactly what we made today. It's the next morning, and as you can see, things went pretty well on eBay. We sold five of the items that I listed. We sold the Tiger, the Harry Potter book, the Year of the Ox, sold the Jurassic World set, the Teal Brick, and, oh, that one I was already sold, so we got all those. Okay, not bad. Everything was going well until I got to the end of bag seven, which is where I'm at right now. I built this whole contraption that you see in the back here. It was all Technic building. And when I got to the end of the bag in the manual, they say, hey, go ahead and do the slider thing and then start typing and seeing how it goes. And spoiler alert, mine went terribly. It was not working well at all. I started disassembling pretty much everything that I built, re-putting it back together, seeing how all the gears were aligned. Everything seemed right and it still wasn't working properly. I'll tell you what fixed it though. <laughs> what silly little thing. This brown rod that runs right back here, I don't even know if you can see it, it's kind of hidden away in there. I just loosened that up a little bit. It's this thing that this spins on. Just loosen that up a little bit and all of a sudden everything's perfect. In fact, watch, I slide that all back. The thing works like a champion now. Now I can type like crazy. You can see the thing moving. That's kind of how this works. Now I get to the end then you slide it all the way back, and then you can start typing again, hopefully, until one of the letters gets stuck. I noticed G. Is it T or G? One of them doesn't love getting pressed very well. This thing's very finicky. Everything has to be just like so perfect and lined up, and like something as silly as just having a, a, a rod in there that's just a little bit too tight can be your doom. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's okay-ish. G just worked. Is it T? Yeah, there. Maybe it's just a fluke. Everything seems to be working here. That was my day in Lego today. Be back tomorrow. We'll do bag eight and we'll find out if this mysterious bag nine is all there or if I messed up on uh, bag six. I know you're probably tired of seeing these typewriter updates, but I've got some good news. Bag nine, the one that I completely new moved on and opened up, all good. Only extra pieces were these ones, which is I think acceptable. And I used my last sticker. There's two stickers in this set. There's that one and then there's there's that one right there. They're both on, so from here on, no more stickers. We've got bag 10 and 11, so what I'm gonna do, as a favor to you, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this thing, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm not even gonna show you what it looks like now, because I want it to be more impressive when I'm like all done. So there's like the little roller mechanism, at least the first part of it, and the next time you see me, I'm gonna have this thing done, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be glorious. All this time of building and doing these updates and working towards this has finally led to a very proud Lego Builder moment. The moment where I've completed officially the Lego Ideas typewriter. And here is what it looks like in all of its glory. One beautiful set, I have to say, but also if I had to describe this in a word other than beautiful, 
I would describe it as finicky. In fact, this is probably the most finicky Lego set that I've ever constructed and also probably the most difficult Lego build that I've ever done with the exception of the manual and the instructions for the Darth Maul bust. It's actually lurking over here in the shadows and this build with all of those layers as you go up was a nightmare to build. This typewriter, not really a nightmare, just a ton of repetition and then again, finicky is the way that I would describe this. And for that reason, like if we're just gonna cut to the chase here, I don't think that I can recommend this set to you. And I know sometimes when you give an honest opinion that's negative, it gets people kind of riled up in the wrong way, but I'm being truthful with you. If you just like, playing around with Lego, trying to get it to work properly. You'll have fun with this, but if you're just like a casual builder, even somebody like last week I built this set, this was exponentially easier to go together and everything just worked versus this. I fought this set in various places, including that one that I showed you in one of the updates where it's that thing where you, where you press the keys, which I will show you here in just a moment. But these right here too, trying to get these all in here just right. You're just going through the same thing like 27 times and you're putting all these keys on. That's a whole bag. There's a whole bag of just Technic pieces. So like on paper, even I don't think I would be a good candidate for this set, but in the end, when it's done here, I really do love it, and I'd love to show you how it all works right now, if you if you care to see it, unless you just left. You're like, okay, you're right, Greg. I think I'm out on the typewriter. Thanks, but no thanks. Don't leave just yet. Let me show you how it works, and maybe I can sell you on this still. I think this shot's gonna be really great for showing this off. You can almost do a first-person thing where you can pretend that you're the one typing. Uh, before I do type, though, I wanna mention <laughs> another thing. You talked about being finicky earlier. Uh, these keys, they sometimes turn a little bit, even when you're just regularly typing, but you can see they can spin around. And once one of them gets a little turned, it kind of triggers me a little bit. Some people probably wouldn't even notice, but if I see one that's any little bit off, I just feel like I need to like turn it and move it. Speaking of moving things, let me move this around to the back. I know I was doing tons of updates as I worked on the front of this, but the back kind of got glossed over because I felt like you guys just, you wanted to see this done. I could feel the comments coming through, like Greg, just come on, get to it. Speaking of getting to it, let's try typing on this. So I'm gonna move this all the way over, just like a typewriter would work. And typically with a typewriter, all of these like key things would strike up, but there's just one in this, and I think that is okay. Now I'm noticing D has moved a little bit here, so <laughs> again, uh, what should we type? Let's type brick attack. Can we get the, all the letters in before the thing gets all the way over? Oh, there's also the ribbon up there too, and then you can switch between the colors, which is not functional. Speaking of not functional, lots of these keys are not functional. The, the shift keys, they do work, but they don't do anything. The space bar does not do anything at all. The backspace just kind of is there. So it's just like the letters actually work, and I think that's fine. Let's type brick attack and see if that's too many letters to get across. I'm very curious. So we'll do B R I C K. I, T, E. Cool, come on down. C, <laughs> T. Yeah, we made it. So when you get to the end, I think we might have a little bit of space left. I can't see anymore, so we'll just do this. And by saying I can't see, when this was all open, you could see how far the thing was over, and you can see it's still moving over. But there, it reached the end. So when it reaches the end, you go like that, and then you bring it over, and it's, I think it's kind of cool. Again, super finicky though, even some of those keys, like depending on the row, and I saw another review that was talking about this, because I wanted to see like, am I the only one struggling with this thing moving? And I saw one that worked really well, so that got me kind of, you know, playing around with it to make sure it works, and now it's like, it's flawless, I mean mostly. But they were talking about how each row kind of has its own feel, you know, in, in terms of pressing these up. Oh, see that one, how slow that is? It comes back down, but it's like thinking about it. I guess it's like hit or miss, especially the top row. The middle row's good, bottom row seems to be good as well. But then you just keep moving that back like that. So, I mean, overall, it's it's a great set. It's just like, dude, you really gotta work for this one. Day my keys get moved, do you see any? I'll look back when I edit this and be like, oh, Greg, turn that cue a little bit. Uh, there is a little more to this, though. You see this? Well, let me flip this over. <laughs> it would help if I had the right side. This are the uh, the letter from Thomas Kirk Christensen, 
and these are all in different languages and you can actually put this into the typewriter which I think is pretty cool. The thing is I really love you guys and would love to share this and show it off but I also want this to retain its value because I feel like this is going to be a bit of a collector's piece. So what I did and I hope you don't mind I took a piece of computer paper and I just like traced this so I could put this piece of paper in there to actually see how this works with a sheet of paper uh, without actually using the, the English one or any other ones because I want to keep this intact and I don't plan to display this with a piece of paper inside of it. It's just gonna be the way that it is. So for tonight's purposes, we're just gonna use a piece of printer paper and, and we'll try it out with that. Moment of truth. Let's see if my paper will make it through here. Now again, this is not designed for this. <laughs> so, you know, if this does work, it'll be a miracle and it actually did. Okay, cool. Got a little crinkled up there, but I think that's acceptable considering that this is a, a Lego product and not an actual typewriter. Let's try typing on it and see how that works. I mean, nothing's gonna really change with this, I don't think, it's just, it is what it is at, at that point. In terms of mechanics, it's just the, the paper. So we'll slide that over, and this is the ruler. They actually use one of those like pirate uh, things that they sit in. Uh, is there one? Yeah, there's one up here. I don't know what it's called, but uh, I got one of them. That is a perfect piece to use for that, and as you can see, I turn that, and that brings the paper through. There isn't like a thing where you go with line and then it does it automatically. We're not at that point yet <laughs> in terms of Lego. Maybe they'll make one in the future that's like an automatic typewriter, which would be wild. Uh, but dude, I don't, I'm probably gonna sit that one out, I would say, just because of how, again, finicky. That's the word, finicky. Bonus points to anyone who comments how many times I say the word finicky. You can count that one too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome to be done. It was a fun build, it was challenging. Repetition wasn't as bad as I thought it would be considering I'm just watching stuff on my TV here while I built, so yeah, it's done. And if it's out of the backlog and it can go on display, where? I think I have a spot. Let's move it over here. Watch me drop this. Imagine. I would just, I think I would just quit at that point. Let's put that right down here beside the other ancient technology, the Atari 2600. Uh, actually, I had a piece fall off. Finicky. There's, there's another one. You know what it is? Uh, I don't know. Okay, don't touch it. I'm never touching this thing again. It's just going to sit there for all eternity. I'm not going to have to worry about it. But a wild Clark man has appeared. Are you an NPC? Dun, 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 dun. I said something about this thing never getting touched ever. I should have probably put it up a little higher up on the shelf. Maybe up here would have been. <laughs> Just when you thought the video was over though. It's not. I had one last thing that we had planned, if you remember back a little ways, and Clark and I are gonna knock out at least a little part of it this morning. Let's just go into the storage room and... What? <laughs> we totally didn't plan that. Here's the project in question. Here's a better shot of what this looks like as it stands currently. And then this is our layout here where we can pull from all of our pieces. This half is mine, this half will be Clark's. We both get on our iPads and we build. As we remember today, being that this is one that is not included in this set, you have to come to Lego's website so you can bring up the instructions for this. And then you just figure out what panel you're on. As you can see, they, they kind of just keep going around. We're on the fourth one down. Yeah. It's three wide, so we've got, we've got a long ways to go here, buddy. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one right there. Uh, yeah, that's right below it. And the way this works is you see all these numbers here? They correspond with these, which corresponds with these, and then you just gotta put the right color and the right number on this, and when you're done, it becomes a small part of the much bigger project, like that. So it's it's actually pretty cool. That one's not so bad. When you're doing the lightsaber side, they're pretty easy, because you're kinda just doing like all that row like that. We've done it right so far, I think, because I don't see anything weird. But that's, that's what Clark Man will be building, and I'll be building this, this wacky one that'll be, uh, right, let's see, I have just, we're building that. I just have the top row of the hill, just the top. Oh, you're finally getting down to the bottom of that? Yeah, we finally reached the hilt. We reached the hilt. That's this. These are like the shiny twos. See those? Yeah, I see they have sparkle. Yeah. Very, very sparkly. I'm gonna one hand this, get you some first person shots here. Dun, dun. I made them watch the typewriter all week, Clark Man, so they're just desperate for something else, and I feel like this might be oh, God, scratching that itch. There, hmm? there we go. Oh no, Punkstani Phil has now appeared. 
I think that should actually be a part of the set. I don't know why they didn't include It'd be that. It'd funny if I did stop motion and I, like, squished him on there, and then he's, like, in the mosaic. He's, like, trying to escape. He's kind of cursed a little bit. His teeth are, uh... Do -do 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 -do. The moment has come. Oh. Here goes. Noise. That looks awesome, buddy. Got a little bit of shoulder in there now. Oh yeah. It yeah. looks like just a small portion though, but it's felt so big. Yeah, like when you just look at it like that, it's like mm. that was like thirty minutes, bro. Can you tell what that is? And you're like, Phew. can you tell what that is, Clark Man? No. <laughs> you will be able to see here in a second. Here we go. Let's do a little sampling here. What do you think? Does that look pretty cool? Yeah, that looks like real, bro. That's pretty darn sick and it's there's a lot more so we'll probably actually have it like up here and there's gonna be a frame around it too ultimately that's what it's gonna look like and you can see we haven't even really got down to the bottom of the lightsaber yet so we've got that good bit to go there but when it's done it's gonna be miraculous on the wall down here a stunning piece if you will how about that for a chapter of our Lego journey? Hopefully you guys aren't too mad at me for skipping out on the Parisian restaurant. I'm sure some of you understand. The rest of you are like, Greg, you wasted your time and effort on that typewriter. That thing's a nightmare. I don't think so. I'm glad that I bought it. I'm glad that I built it. And I'm happy to have it in the collection and on display down here. You might even be able to see it. Oh, yeah. Little spoiler alert there. If you saw it in the beginning of the video, I don't know if you can or not, but you know, it was there. It was just, just out of frame ever so slightly. Uh, but that was this week. I'm really happy with all the things that we got done and I'm excited once again to uh, continue this this series on as we do it week by week as it's stood so far. I know these videos are getting super long and there's a part of me that thinks maybe I should break these up into like random things uh, throughout the week of uh, like the chapter being like one object or another. Like this one could have been probably three videos, but I also kind of like it, you know, feeling like an episode, a weekly episode in our Lego journey, which is ultimately what I, I hope this, this is and what it feels like to you because that's what it feels like to me and I'm just excited to share with you. So on that, I hope you have a glorious week and we'll see you next week for the next chapter of our Lego journey.